and join us after our panel outside the rece for reception at, outside the theater. But now let's bring out the group. Please welcome, as Toby, Mr. Chris Sullivan. <laughs> as Kate, Ms. Christine Max. <laughs> as Kevin, Mr. Justin Hartley. and Susan Kalechi Watson. As Randy, Mr. Sterling K. Brown. As Rebecca, Ms. Mandy Moore. As Jack, Mr. Milo Vazir. And Amanda Hyda, the writer, creator, and executive producer, Mr. Van Bowman. She moderated this event last year and did such a spectacular job. We just knew we had to have her back. Nellie, take it away. Yeah.
a baby? <laughs> it's a sore, it's a potential sore. I mean, just, I actually literally, in our offices across the lot, and we do a process where when we write a script, all of our writers gather and we do a page turn on the script where we beat up the script. And no matter who wrote it, the other writers get to kind of crap on it. And then we <laughs> just and fight. And then we do the same thing when we have a first, when I have a first cut and Isaac Moses had a first cut, we, we bring it to all the writers and we watch it collectively and then we talk for a lot. And literally, 20 minutes ago, I showed everybody the first episode of the third season. And uh, I think it's one of our, I think it's one of our best episodes um, that we've done so far. I'm really, really excited about it. And there is joy in it. Um, you know, different writers will play in different storylines, and, and I'm really excited about it. Last year, everybody was saying how your, the whole plot when we read the first script of the season. So what is your reaction to this actually seeing the, the pilot, the, the, the first episode of that season three? What is Reaction. Is it? Uh, so, first of all, it's exciting. You know, it's kind of like you're looking forward to that first day back at school because you miss your friends, you miss your teachers, you miss everything about it. And then you get to find out. You know, oh. And then you get to find out. Yes! Yeah. Yeah. You get to find out, you know, what classes everyone has.
just looks exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs>
too. Yeah. I feel much better right now. The puppy, the puppy apparently gets recognized now. That's the thing when people leave the puppy, they say that, like, I think it might have just been a dog person trying to negotiate a better deal, but they're like, you better hook up this dog because he's getting recognized. Yeah. Yeah. I think it laid out exactly as it should have been laid out. Um, and I know that the scene previous, where we're sitting on the, the edge of the hospital bed and just having a conversation, and there's gratitude for just both being there and, and being alive. And I think, did you say like one of the most important things you were here or something like that? Or at least that's what I felt sitting next to Mandy Moore before that scene. Uh, it's, but it's, you never, you never get those moments in life. You don't know what is going to happen. But God damn it, you better live your life. You better love deeply and love fully and love as, as hard as you can because you may, you, you may not get the moment. You know, and, and for, it, even though you didn't know that it was coming, I still think you know, to be able to share that laugh without the TV is probably like a nice little blessing. But also in, in death, like that was... That was one of the hardest things that I felt all year was laying as still as I could, listening to one of my closest friends just completely break. Oh. That hurt. That just hurt. It sucked. Did you, um, I mean, you couldn't see it because of this reflection, but did you cry in that scene? No, I just kind of laid there as still as I could. It's good, man. I could in stillness. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, by the way, um, you know that it's, you have better odds of getting nominated for an Emmy if you're dead in the present time. We are no longer with us, the characters. So. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a true fact? Uh, yeah. It is. It's <laughs> 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 Milo, how, um, how hard was it to, to shoot that scene? She
which you may die from just tear, exhaustion, <laughs> and just like breaking down, or, because you went through the gauntlet and you did so. Um, When she comes back on like our side, our side, you know, the stage, and she's like, "Oh my god, I made my makeup was like falling off because these girls are so funny." Um, well, uh, by the way, um, throwing, um, for the rapping is your um, something you do freestyle rapping. Uh, 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 I heard, I heard, I heard that too. I, I found that. <laughs> Out in front, 
and that we make our decisions together. And so she takes it into a place and says, like, maybe it's not somebody from her. Maybe you don't get a chance to, like, you know, leave your imprint from that point. But there are children out there that the system can't forget about, that society can forget about, that are worthy children that need a chance, that need love, that have every desire and act with that same sort of access to it. And so we wind up fostering an older child, right? And Randall, being the person he is, he dealing with his perfectionism and wanting to do everything right. And he, you know, two seasons in a row, he introduces something into his life that is beyond his control. You know, a father with stomach cancer, a young lady who has lived a full life, right? Who flinches at the first time that he tries to touch her. But now he has to figure out, how do I meet this child where she is? You know, you can't have the answers for everything all the time, but you can be present. Like, you can show up. And what I love about Randall throughout the course of the season is he learns to release the need to be in control and learns the benefit of just being present, right? And, and so Deja eventually makes her way to him, but not as soon as Randall would like to, not as like, you know, we're not baking cookies together and living that sort of, you know, cookie cutter dream, but we have moments that are really lovely. Um, and when he has to say goodbye to her, it, it pains him, right? So, yeah, he, he, he has both of his father's mind, and you see more of that coming into season three. Um, I can even remember, as, as Sir, I can't even remember when episode 115 was entitled Jack Pearson's Son. And I can remember having this moment saying, and it was about uh, Kevin's journey for sure. I remember saying, I'm Jack Pearson's son too. Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually had that feeling of like, oh, he, got, he got two sons. Yeah, no, that's, that sounds like you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm like, you know what I'm saying? You are, you are, yeah. you are, you are. <laughs> But we have that sort of happen throughout the course of, of season three as well. Um, because both of the, his dad is Jack. Like, that's the man who raised him. That's the man who he looks to as like a model of a father. But the fact that the person who lets him go, that he had a chance to walk through life now with the knowledge that he actually did want him, that he was not unwanted. I think that was part of his narrative in life. Like, I'm unwanted, and so I have to work extra hard to make sure that people want me, to make sure that my place in, in, in life is secure. And now I think he gets a chance to let that piece go a little bit, you know? So I'm thankful for that, the journey that we had through season one with William and Randall. Um, and now moving into season three, you see how he tries to honor both of these men and the decisions that he makes to live his life. <laughs> that's that's William, William's cat back there. <laughs> well, there's a little weight there back here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so I we all got loud mics now. Yeah, yeah. So urban planning. Um, <laughs>
And they work pretty well together, I think, and finding their way to kind of have a mission together. It all goes back to honoring William and the fact that Randall isn't the only person who wants to honor William. It's like having an echo in the phone. You know when you're talking to somebody and there's an echo in the phone and you feel like you're... Like right now? That's what's happening. Yeah. But, um, yes, so back to honoring William. It was, it's our way of honoring him and it's an extension of that, but it's also Beth using her skills and what she really wants to put into the world is to beautify neighborhoods that people deem not beautiful or not worthy. And that's her contribution. And her husband found a way to give her that outlet that she's not having at work and a way for them to team up, honor William, and do all those things together. So it, it, it really speaks to something that I had spoken about with Dan, and I feel like the writers are so good about, which is um, seeing each character as individuals. What are the things that kind of make them tick? What are the things, who is Beth as Beth, and not necessarily Beth as a wife or Beth as a mother? And one of the things that they're so smart about is something that I've observed in friends and in women that feel like once they get married or once they have children, their individual identity gets lost. And what I enjoy about Beth is that there's a, there's a maintenance of that. There's a willingness to explore what her individual identity is and what makes her tick. And um, the fact that she um, doesn't have to sacrifice um, the uniqueness of herself uh, in order to be a good wife and a good mother. And so to see her passion in helping communities and uh, things of that nature has been a part of, you know, one of the cool things that I get to explore. That's all. And will we get to explore the backstory, the origin story of both um, Beth and Randall and Jeff and Rebecca a little bit more? Yeah, I mean, I think that's the plan for this season. You're going to learn a lot more clearly, and uh, as you may see later tonight, you're going to see a lot of the origin story of Jack and Rebecca. But I think we're going to start catching up a little bit to Sterling and Susan's characters meeting, learning more about Toby and Susan's backstory. We've grown up with this family, but we don't know what came before for Toby and uh, and uh, and Beth. Sorry. And, uh, sorry. And, uh, but literally, we start shooting an episode tomorrow named Toby. And so, Congratulations. I know you were saying it's about Ben, it's not but it's called Toby. Toby. Yeah. <laughs> That's the surprise. That's, uh, that was William's Toby Cat. Yeah. <laughs> it was, I know it was um, a, a, an issue for the two of you, for Beth and Toby, um, to, when they fell out and were kicked out of that session with a therapist because they, they're not part of the family. And how, how does it feel to get backstories, to get cute kids like you two, hopefully the way the others get it? Um, I, I'm, uh, you warm it up and then I'm gonna come in. I've seen the kid is not that cute. <laughs>
The stories, are, the stories are very exciting this year. The, the two relationships, what, what's cool about this season coming up is I, think, I feel like for the, the first two seasons we were telling a, a story with a bit of a beginning and a middle and an end, and it ended at that wedding for, for Kate and Toby, and it ended with everybody taking that breath, and now they're kind of embarking on this next stage, and I think uh, you wouldn't know based off being a fan of the show where their stories are going to go this season, and it's, it feels very exciting. Um, they're exploring new things in their relationships. There's tension and romantic stuff, and I think people are going to be very surprised by where their stories go um, in the season. I want to say this. I haven't read the backstory yet. I know about it, but I haven't read it. But I did read the next episode of Toby, and I'm t telling you, like, I'm telling you, like, I'm telling you that it is good. <laughs> of each character, and I feel like the writers are so good about that. So there's all these things you've learned about Toby so far, right? And then you read this episode, and you see where it all came from. And it's so much deeper than you know the, the man that you've known for two seasons is going to really unfold for you in such an ex exciting way that I'm really excited. Yeah, I, I am very, I'm very excited as well. The, the writers, the writers give us these things. Mandy already spoke about it. it the, the the service that is is presented to us, it's on the page. It's all on the page. And I, I ran into uh, one of our writers today, uh, KJ, who who wrote three or four, um, entitled Toby. Um, and. <laughs> And she said, so what are you, what are you thinking? And any, any objections? And, and uh, I, was, I, have, I have none. I have none. I've never, I've never had one. Um, the writing that, that continues to come out of that room is some of the consistently highest quality storytelling that I've ever seen. Episode... <laughs> for example, episode one of season three is as good, if not better, than any of the episodes we've done up until now, which is just crazy to me that a group of people can perform at that high level for that long, episode after episode. It's pretty, it's, it's, it's quite the honor to be a part of this. Uh, on that note, I would like to ask you, Dan, about this, um, the writing nominations and directing nominations. Um, it is pretty glaring that a show like This Is Us has not been nominated for writing or directing, and it seems to be that um, attitude towards broadcast drama series. It's it, you're not the only one. There've been there've been only one show in the last, this decade to get a writing nomination on that airs on broadcast television. Um, it is we heard it so many times tonight from the actors about uh, that it's all on the page and you if you do produce 18 of those scripts a year. How do you feel about that? Uh, <laughs> Curious. No, uh, no, we really, we don't, we don't. Honestly, for us, I think the showcase of this is the seven actors. I think we, we firmly believe it, and we're not just saying it. Um, for the show to get any recognition, I, I, I had low expectations for what the success of the show was going to be. If you had put a gun to my head when we started, I would have thought, oh, people are going to really like the show. I hope it finds an audience. That was truly my expectation, and I thought it could be big, but not where, not like this. I didn't see this coming, so it's disappointing when Mandy and Justin and Chrissy don't get individually recognized after the work they've done. <laughs> but, only, only because we've gotten sucked into this vortex where you can lose sight of the fact that no one saw this coming, including the people who were working on it. And um, I remember going to the first, when we first got nominated for the gold, first Golden Globes, I was so anxious, it's not my comfort zone. And I was so drunk. And, and, I was, and all of a sudden, and they were saying we might win. 
and I would have to give a speech on television, and I was horrified. It was terrible. Uh -huh. And they announced, the hand, it was, was it Oprah that, was that the first one? And she said, duh, and it was like, duh, but the duh sounded like this. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, and my stomach dropped, and it was the handmaid's tale. And then all of a sudden, after praying, like literally on my knees praying, please don't make me give a speech on national television. All of a sudden you feel this pang of disappointment because you, you've lost something. You're like, wait a second, I, I'm i so excited to just kind of be being acknowledged. I thought the show would be canceled after two episodes. And so that's how I feel about all this. I, would, I think when these seven actors collectively and individually get recognized in any capacity, um, for us, that's the win. I would put these guys in a multi camera sitcom. I would put them in a serious, heavy streaming drama, and they would kick the shit out of any cast on television. And <laughs> and, and, so, when Sterling was in the world, Ma was nominated, when the cast was a sad war against all these other crazy shows, that's our, that's our win. Uh, so I think the big win is an audience that's engaged in what yeah. we're yeah. all collectively <laughs> doing together. I think one, one nomination is a reflection of it. every piece of artistry that touches the character or the group, the category, anything. It's it's this crew, this group, this cast, this everything, and we can all speak to this, is such a unique experience that is true of love reflected amongst the group just going out to an audience that's engaged and getting it back. The real gold statue is, is the audience. That, that fact that they're excited, they're happy about when are you coming back. Yeah, I mean, you don't get like, they really should, you know, nominate everybody else. But you don't, you don't get things like this. I mean, this is to be this popular and also recognized. It, it doesn't happen. It's been something I've chased my entire career. How do you make something that can be accessible for a populist audience, but also of high quality? And I feel like um, I don't. I'll never understand the people who look at it as a broadcast television show versus another form of television show. I, I don't see it that way, and I don't mind it. But like, I'm like, listen, if you don't like the show, you probably wouldn't like me very much, and that's okay. But like, that's what that's what I'm, that's what we do. The people who work on the show, like, if you don't, if it's not for you, then we're probably not for you, and that's okay. But we're very proud of what we're doing, and we're gonna keep doing it. Scenes of the best scenes she's ever had. Yeah. 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 
And it is, and I think it's worth time. And it's punctuated with another opportunity where every single part of it is meant to have a curse word in it to punctuate this model. And she doesn't have it, and she crushes it. And it's like, so just on a simple level, what they're doing on network television is equally complicated because we have a set of rules we live by, and that may keep the show accessible, but they have to be delivering that kind of nuance without the words. And it's very, it's very difficult in this day and age in 2018 to do, and they're killing it, each and every one of them. So, I think they're doing it. Chris, can you tell us a little bit more about... I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> um, I, I do think I know what he's talking about, but I didn't think I did that. So thanks, Dan. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's the monologue at the birthday party. Yes, I thought that's what you were. I was there. <laughs> <Kill me. laughs> oh, that's your birthday, right? That's, that's yes, it's my birthday party. Um, Culver City. <laughs> Actually, it's Madison's house. I don't think she lives in Culver City. Um, anyway, um, she's got some money. Anyway, so. <laughs> Thing where I just really try to stay present. And I don't know what the hell is going to happen. And uh, I'm relatively new in this whole thing, right? Um, but I know, I, we all know what inadequacy feels like. And we all know what it is to compare and despair to things that, and to people that we'll never measure up to or things that we'll never be able to do. And we just sort of deal with the cards that have been dealt to us. And so, thank you. I mean, I. I it's even hard for me to accept a compliment. I'm working on it. Um, and somebody told me, like, the more that you deflect it, the more it becomes about you. So I'm just saying thank you. Um, and, um, but just, you know, Kate's, she's come through a lot, but there's still so much going on that she's still contending with. And she's a newlywed, and it's her birthday, and um, the family dynamic, and she, the desire to want to be a mom and start a family. And, they know she's never going to measure up, and specifically to her mother, and specifically to the women in her life, whether it's Beth or Madison. Um, so it's just, you know, a lot, a lot of stuff going on. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, is there, a, you, you mentioned what your character went through last, last year with the miscarriage and um, all the stress, but, um, now in the flash forward, we saw that uh, you have to care for your new husband. Um, how is, did you have any happy honeymoon? Was there any period where you were happy for a second? We were really uh, pushing the writers to write us a honeymoon in Hawaii. We were trying to go on a vacation. You <laughs> Wouldn't it be so great if they went on a honeymoon to Hawaii? We have like, it's a double episode. <laughs> with a to be continued. You guys were in Vegas last year. You guys were in Vegas last year. We keep pushing, we want a Pearson family vacation for yeah. fun like that. Come on. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Yeah. Maybe yeah. like Philadelphia. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Maybe like Chicago. for this love all their lives, so it's sort of like they live in a honeymoon in a lot of ways. I, I, I know, I don't know what to say. Um, but I do think that, you know, they're really truly happy, but there's just a lot of things that they're contending with as individuals and how that affects the, the new marriage and the dynamic of the relationship. Yeah, and there's an evolution to the happiness. They think they understand what happiness is or what it has been. Um, and as they kind of settle in to their uh, to the present moment with each other, they are, I think, the, their, their idea of happiness. And, uh, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs>
Yes. Yeah. 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 One of the best movies I've ever seen. That movie is so good. I agree. Yeah. 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 Dan actually, Dan actually grabbed Mandy and yeah. I and said, hey guys, you guys want to see this movie? Oh, yeah. The crime level uh, compared to This Is Us. Like, way, You way ain't losing life, is what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> is what I'm trying to tell you. If you're not ready, okay. it's like the oh, like end of fire in one episode. <laughs> It's like such a beautiful, beautiful story, life itself, that you need to... Is this like a Spanish Jack and Rebecca? Like there's this oh, yeah, movie. totally. <laughs> the, 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 no, seriously, you'll see. <laughs> this is what I love about uh, Dan. He's never content to rest on his laurels, and the next thing he does, he wants to be the best thing he does. Yeah. And this movie is phenomenal. It's so good. It's so beautiful. Okay, yeah, in case you just call it Life Itself, yeah. Go see this movie. Yeah. We saw my wife and I saw a screening. The way that this is us zooms way in on people and, and gets gets minute with them. This movie zooms out on life in a way that when my wife and I left the theater here on Milan, we were different people. Yep. We were we were moved. I mean moved from one place to another in our life. It was it's really beautiful. Life itself. Yeah. <laughs> I need somebody who's coming in the room, actually. Yeah. Thank you, that's really sweet. You have to mind. wrap it up. You will introduce the, the second surprise you're ending with. You will be the first people to see outside of the group here to see um, a scene from episode three. You haven't seen it yet. Please don't do it. The guys have not, guys have not seen this yet. Please don't videotape it. I'm trusting everybody here because we know each other so well. But, uh, I, but uh, uh, the context is, uh, the context of it is, this is in our season premiere. We're going into uh, Jack and Rebecca's first date. Um, they, they go to a carnival and Jack's big stress of the evening is that- No, I was broken reading this. It's like, I could cry right now. Like, I can't get up. Wait till you see that. <laughs> That's what we're about to show you. Uh, so, uh, but uh, yeah, so they, they go on this first date. Jack is very stressed because he's just back from Vietnam. He has nine dollars to his name and has to struggle through a carnival, very stressful whole night that he's going to run out of money and eventually does but doesn't want to tell her. And, uh, and didn't buy an umbrella when it was raining because he was out of money, but pretended it wasn't raining that hard because he didn't want to tell her. So that's the setup. The date has gone bad after a promising start, and now he's driving her home after an awkward first date. So that is the setup. Um, and uh, should we play it? <laughs> 